Special Beam Cannon! SB Cannon coming at you, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Vector Man. And this is episode number three. And we're on day five here. The Arctic... Arctic Ridge. And... This is a pretty cool level, and this really goes to show how graphically excellent this game is, for its time anyways. Vector Man itself was kind of, sort of, if you don't know, it was kind of like a, um, it was Sega's response to Donkey Kong Country. Because, you know, Donkey Kong Country has the, the 3D rendered graphics and it looks real nice or whatever. So, you know, Vector Man was Sega's answer to that. You know, they was trying to do sort of the same thing. And I think they I think they pulled it off pretty well. They did it pretty cool. The only difference is, you know, with Donkey Kong, they use real life, pretty much real life stuff. I mean, alligators, monkeys, trees, and bananas and stuff. Like, you use real stuff. Like, all, everything in this game is pretty much fake. I mean, of course, we have this rain, the snow. Obviously, that's real. And this right here that I have, this is like a shield upgrade that you can get. Basically, I think I get it a couple of times throughout the game. But it's a little shield that makes you invincible for a while, which is cool. I mean, who doesn't like to be invincible? I, I addressed this last episode. But anyways, this was like Sega's response to Donkey Kong Country because this game it looks pretty great graphically. You know, if I do say so myself. And this right here, this is the shield receiver. Did you see the guy down there at the bottom? Not the enemy, but next to it, the little, the little teapot looking like deal. Those two things together take you to the bonus level, the bonus stage. You have to hit the thing on the bottom first, and then you come back and you destroy the satellite to get to the bonus stage, which I'm gonna do in this level. This guy right here, he's frustrating. What you can do is as you saw me do, you can double jump, Right, and it'll make him jump in the air, and then you run under him. That's what you're sp supposed to do. Or you can just destroy his tail and make him walk towards you. If you go through the path that I'm taking right here, this will lead you all the way down to the shield receiver that I showed you earlier. That thing, destroy that, and then the shield comes off the satellite, and you can destroy that. And everything's good and dandy. Once you destroy the satellite and the shield receiver, you go straight to the bonus level. Level ends, you go to the bonus level. Which is this. It's a little, little weird. I wish I knew that my gun was going down. Because if I knew that, I would have just finished the level normally. Because that's going to get annoying real quick. But anyways, on the bonus level, you just use the directional, directional arrows to shoot whichever way you want to shoot. And basically what you want to do is stay alive. Each time you get hit, one of your lives down there at the bottom... Yeah, it goes away, and when you die, you die, and the bonus level ends. You don't lose a life or anything, but the bonus level will end. You just want to stay alive as long as you can until the time goes out. You know, it's as simple as that. But as you can see, this stuff gets crazy real fast, real crazy, real quick. Like, what what is going on? What 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 in the world is going on right here? Like, I don't even. How am I even still alive right now? I lost. Yeah. Well. On to day six, the bamboo mill. This is a pretty interesting level as well. Like I've stated in both of the last episodes, now that I think about it, you know, the levels just go from left to right. Left to right. But in this level, you have so many different paths that you can choose to go through because... There's so many different paths to choose from. You see all these barrels that are going up and down throughout the level? You can actually ride those up and down. Even though some of them look like they're in the background, you can actually ride them. You know, take you like up a level or down a level, blah, 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 like that. One up. I wish I had a multiplier so I could uh, multiply that one up. You know, because that's what a multiplier would do, it multiplies things. It's pretty cool. It's not really too much of a puzzle or anything. Like I said, you're just going from left to right, so it's not too frustrating. The hard part about this game is just dodging everything. Because there's a lot of stuff that they'll throw at you all at the same time.
I mean, a lot of this, the stuff in the game is hard to dodge unless you just know what the enemies are going to do and how to dodge them, basically. These turrets, that's what these are, these little gray things. Those are so annoying in this game. Like, if it's your first time playing this game, you're going to hate those. You're going to hate those, and you're going to hate the little flying mosquito-like things. Because once you start level 5, they start dropping bombs. Bombs. Bombs, like randomly. And it's frustrating. It gets worse in the second game, which hopefully I'll do eventually. But yeah, the enemies in this game, there's not very many of them. But, you know, they do get iffy. They're weird. And that's one thing I don't really like. That's why I don't like birds. Or butterflies. Un the unpredictability. You can't really predict them. They just do whatever the heck they want to do. I hate things that aren't controlled. But, that's a conversation for another day. Anyways, you get another shield here. Like I said, you're invincible when you have a shield, kind of like Sonic. You know, when he gets his little music invincibility thing, just running through everything. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you see me just get hit right now? How is I supposed to dodge that? How? Someone tell me. Please tell me. How is I supposed to dodge that? Anyways, you want to come up to this part, to the top of the area, as far up as you can. Because if you do, then you'll grab this thing right here in this TV. Yeah, more lives. But anyways, at the bottom of this little well, or chasm, or whatever you want to call it, is a boss. This ugly thing. I don't know what it is, but it's ugly. I think I mentioned this in the first level. This level, level 6, is as far as I ever got as a kid. Because this... This fireball spitting thing. It doesn't do anything until you shoot it in the head. Otherwise, it just rams you into the wall like it just did me. Otherwise, yeah, it just rams you into the wall until you hit shoot it again. And as you saw right there, Vector Man's double jump actually does damage to enemies. So, you know, you can use that sometimes, especially here. You know, when you're not dying. Yeah. I have to die sometime, though. Because, I mean, you have to see how Vector Man dies. It's so sudden. Just that impact, you just... Uh, you're dead. I always hated that as a kid. That would always scare the crap out of me. Because I never saw it coming. Like, I never... Like, whenever I have one pillar of life left, it's so scary because you don't know when you're going to get hit and where it's going to come from. And that sucked. But anyways, second time I took on the boss. Not too hard. Pretty simple. Shoot it in the head, and it'll be dead. See how that rhymed right there? You see what I did there? Yeah. Next level, though. Level seven? Seven. This is a short little level. Rock and roller. You're on this little bam bamboo conveyor belt type thing. What, are we making sushi? I wish. But, um, you gotta shoot these hands. I assume those are Warhead's hands. I don't know, but you're running around. You only have a minute to finish this level, so you want to be quick about it. You just got to keep shooting Warhead's hands. And, um, yeah, level's over. Those pink arrows make the uh, conveyor belt go faster. Green ones make it go slower. So, SB Cannon, out.